So hello, everybody. This is Jason Key at SP Grid in Boston. Thanks for joining today. Uh, this is our first webinar of the our sort of webinar season, which sort of follows the academic calendar. So uh, uh, it's my pleasure to kick it off with Alessandra Villa. So Alessandra is at the KTH in Sweden. She is uh, uh, going to tell us about Gromex today. She her background is in chemistry and uh, quantum chemistry. So after a PhD in quantum chemistry, she went to uh, I'm going to use my best Dutch pronunciation here, Groningen in, uh, in the Netherlands, where Gromax started, right? So the G, the G is Groningen, and, uh, and then continued on uh, to Sweden when Groningen, when that Gromax moved over. And um, uh, thank you very much for joining us today, and uh, looking forward to hearing about new developments in Gromax. So thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank the SB Grid Consortium for having Gromax in this webinar series. My name is Alessandra. As Jensen already introduced me, I'm working in Stockholm in Sweden, and I have around more than 20 years experience in working with Gromax, I will say. Yeah. So Gromax is covering a large, a lot of different topics. So here I was trying to focus on topics that might be of interest of if you want uh, to for structure determination. So what actually I was trying to focus in particular is on structure determination using molecular dynamic simulation with Gromax. And I will go a little in detail on practical things, how to set a simulation, for example, with, and which are the input and which are the output. Uh, so this scenario that I was imagining if, uh, was um, one wants to, for example, verify a structural hypothesis or to show the effect of a mutation, or to complete or support some experimental evidence, or for example, to see the effect of an environment on a determined, experimentally determined structure. So these were the applications that I was focusing when I was preparing this presentation. And I think in all this context, one has to keep in mind what is the goal of molecular dynamic simulation or molecular simulation in general. And the main goal is to generate enough representative conformation in such a way that we can extract accurate value of a property. So this is the main goal of any simulation and among this also molecular dynamic simulation. Now I will go briefly to refresh what is molecular dynamics about and then I will move on more on really how you can do it with Chromax. So we say the aim is to generate conformation and molecular dynamics generate this conformation using the Newton plane, the Newton equation of motion. So we always start with a configuration. So it means the position of all the atoms. So a point in space, but also a point in time at T1. Then we apply the Newton equation of motion and then we get a new conformation at time two. And you can see that from time one and time two, we have a delta T. So we are doing it in a sort of numerical way. And then we apply again the Newton equation, and then we go to a third conformation in a third point in time. So in this way, molecular simulation generate configuration, or in another way, we can say is sampling the phase space. If we go a little more in detail, we look a little more in detail in the Newton equation, we can see that is a relation between the acceleration acting on an atom, for example, and the force acting on the atoms and the mass acting on the atom, the mass of the atom. So usually we know the mass of all the atoms that we are using. And so we need to know the force to be able to have the acceleration and then to calculate the velocity and the new position of our particle. The force is, we derive the force as if we derive as a first negative of the first derivative of the potential. The potential is a potential that is in function of all the particle of our system and is described all the interaction that we have with all the atoms in the system. This equation, as you can see, is a second order differential equation. That means that we need to, has to be solved numerically. Indeed, we use a very small step. This step that we use in the simulation, as you can see in this small movie, 
are very, very tiny compared to human step. So with this step in time, we generate new conformation and this way we sample the phase space. And now we want to look a little more how it looks like this potential that actually regulate all, all the interaction of our particle between our particle and some way define the landscape that we have to sample. So potential and molecular dynamic simulation usually are divided in a set of analytical functions that describe the bonded interaction. So we have function describing the bonds, the angle, the torsion. And if you look carefully, all those functions come from classical mechanics. Then we have also function that describe the non-bonded interaction. For example, the Lena Jones or the Coulombic interaction. What is peculiarity of the non-bonded interaction that you can see that both those interactions decay at long distance towards zero. And that we will use also this property to avoid to calculate all the interaction, but only the close by interaction. This uh, way of describing the system is called molecular mechanics force field. And uh, usually each force field is defined by a set of analytical function and a set of parameters. In, in the biophysics and biochemistry field, we usually use an atomistic description of the system. So that means that we, have, we define atom types. And usually we have more than one atom types for each element, since one element can be in a different functional group. And this way, have also a diff slightly different property. So the other things that when we use the force field, we have to think about that, as I told before, there is a close relation between the parameters and the analytical function that we use to describe the force field. That means that we are not allowed to take parameter from one force field and use it in another one. If it's, of course, for example, that you have non-natural amino acid and is not parameterized, not in the parameters are not in the standard force field, you should perform a new parameterization in line with the parameterization strategy of the force field that you are using and to generate new parameter. There are also a lot of online server offline tools that can help in doing that for different type of force field. Here I just list some of them. In general, there are four, I will say, most common family of force field that are used in biophysical biochemistry. And that is amber, charm, gromos, and OPLS for an atomistic description. Then we have a Martini force field for a more coarse grain description. A coarse grain description is a description where a group of atoms are defined with one particle. So this is a really brief introduction to the methods. And now I want to move to more to the practical part, how we perform a simulation using Gromax. So which are the input files that we need? So we have three types of input files that we need. First of all, as we saw at the beginning, we have a starting configuration. So that means that we have information, the position of all the atoms of the system. So indeed, we need a file containing those information of the position and maybe also the velocity acting on the atoms. This file in Gromax, we, I will call it structure file, and I can have a PDB format or a Pro format that is specific Gromax format. Then we need to know how to describe the interaction between in our system, between our atoms. So we have to choose the molecular model. In particular, we need a file that contains all those information. And this file, the topology file, in Gromax usually has its extension top AITP. And then finally, we need also to provide to Gromax what we exactly we want to do, how, what, how, why, and how we want to run the simulation. And all those information in Gromax are in the molecular dynamics parameter file. So these are three files that we need to run a simulation in Gromax. Now I will go through all of those three input files, and I will provide you some uh, tips or issue that might occur when you generate those files, things that one has to pay attention maybe. 
So the structure file. The structure file, we need to definitely to start our simulation. And so we need an initial coordinate. Usually those come from experimental structure that can come from a database, for example, from the PDB data bank, or they might come from your own experiment. But if any experimental structure, a fine experimental structure is not available, we might need to build this three-dimensional structure. And then we can use a modeling, modeling on docking approach. That is for the macromolecule. But we, if we want also to have our macromolecule in a solvent, we need also to pre-built a solvent box. Bromax already provide a pre-built water box, but maybe you are interested in another type of solvent. So you have first to build your solvent box that then you will use to solvate your macromolecule. Possible issue with this starting structure. So not all the atoms might be available in the experimental structure. Maybe some flexible loops are missing. So one has to think about what is known of those flexible loops, how long are those, how we want to model, and has to make the decision, cannot simulate directly the structure, but has to make some decision on the missing part. The other things that my one has to think about is the position of the hydrogen atom. So as probably we know, experimentally, it might be difficult to, know, uh, to have a, the position and to know where the, the hydrogen atom are. And uh, we might also be other things that in some condition in the experiment, might, we might have a condition different from what we want to simulate. So we might also to con consider possible change in pK shift, or also we might consider also change in pH. So we want maybe different protonation states. Also, we have to think about that most of the hydrogen that come from the data, the PDB database are just part of the refinement procedure. So maybe we are not so in particular, I think for old structure, we might not be sure that are there. And also we might occur, simulate something that has tautomeric states this is a recent myocore with the RNA, for example. And it's very difficult to know exactly which statomeric states from experimental information. So and also there we have to think about where will go our hydrogen. In the structure that we get, maybe we have also other molecules, for example, water, ion. And that is important to think about. Are those small molecules really part of the structure in the complex of the structure or just there? because of uh, the experimental procedure, for example. Shall I keep them, their position when I build the starting structure or not? So this has uh, required also some decision, like also the extra molecule that might be present like cofactor, ligand, sulfatan, and other special condition that might be used to promote the, the observation of the experimental structure. But we have to think about if we want this in our simulation or not. When we make all this decision and we have our macromolecule complete, then we probably want to put the micromolecule in a correct environment. And this is the other step that we have to do. So in this context, for example, this is an extreme case where we have a membrane, a membrane protein. So here probably we want to put the membrane in a lipid bilayer. Maybe we have to think about which composition we want that the lipid bilayer will have. We might also decide the concentration of ion that we have in the water phase. And also maybe if we have other, like in this case, we have, for example, alcohol molecule around. And we have to build all the environment around. Bromax in some aspect can help. Other times we have other tools online that help to build the correct environment around the molecule. So now we have all the ingredients. So this will be at the end. The, box the system that you will simulate. How Gromax can help in doing this, in preparing the structure file. So for example, if we have a PDB structure, this is a RNA loops, a small RNA loop. And uh, we add all the missing atoms. There is a tool in Gromax 
that might help us to decide the protonation states of the termini of some atoms, that is PDB to GEMIX. And then uh, we have to define a box. When we simulate, always our molecule is put in a box. And the simulation box is a little peculiar box, since it's a box without edge. So it's a box that is surrounded by a copy of the same box in all the direction. And so in total is surrounded by 26 imaging of himself. That means that when this molecule is going out, the molecule will come in on the other side. So the red one is the actual box, all the other are imaging. That is how is the simulation box that we use. So that means that we use periodic boundary condition. And when we build the box, we have to pay attention that the molecule, the molecules is large enough that the molecule do not see himself. And how we can guarantee this, we can, for example, build a box with the distance between the macromolecule at the edge of the box that is larger than the cutoff. The cutoff is a value, a larger, of, sorry, of half of the cutoff. And the cutoff is when we cut the long, the electrostatic van der Waals interaction. So then we might also decide when we decide the dimension of our box, so the distance between the macromolecule and the edge, then we have also to have, we have decide something else. We have to decide which shape will have our box. In Gromax, there are several boxes that are implemented. So this is the classical one, cubic rectangular box. But then we have also hexagonal box, truncated or iterated box, or thrombic or decaedral. As you can see from the number here, all those box as a volume that is smaller than the cubic box. So we aim always to have a box that is more spherical as possible. Why the reason? Because calculate the interaction, in particular non-bonded interaction between all the atoms is very expensive. So we want to calculate only the important interaction, the key interaction for the sampling of our macromolecule. So probably the, those molecules that are here in this edge, or in all the edge, are not so relevant, are really far away from our macromolecules, so might not affect. And so we just can remove them and cut it, like we are doing in the dodecaedric, or, uh, orthorhombic dodecaedric box, so that is a very spherical box. So we just suggest to use orthorhombic dodecaedric for a global protein, while if you have a membrane simulation, maybe you want to go for an hexagonal box. Okay, so now we have our box, we have defined our box. We have run edit conf that put our macromolecule in a box, and then we go on. We have other two things, so we have to include the environment. And to do that, Gromax has two tools that might help. One is Jamix Solvate that allowed us to solvate a macromolecule using a box of solvent, and then gen ion that add, uh, are, um, help us to add ion. Usually ion are randomly replaced by, so what happens, water molecules are randomly replaced by other ion. And uh, usually we want ion both to get the correct ion concentration on strength of the system, but also to neutralize the system. And now we are ready. We have our nice box with our macromolecules in our solvent with a, with a neutralized system and in good ion concentration. So this will be our structural file. That can be in a GROW format or in a PDB format. Now we go to see the second file that we need, the topology file, that we say that to define the model that we have, we have to use. Here I have an example, as an example, I have a protein, a small protein. And uh, so the first things that we have to do is to decide which force field. And when we decide the first field, we also define the model for the water and for the ion. We come all together because as I told before, we cannot mix model and force field. How we can choose the force field. So, Actually, first choice that we have to do is decide how we want to describe our system, which degree of freedom it means, do we want an atomistic description or maybe we are happy with also with a close grain description where a group of atoms are described with one particle. Then we want, we have to choose which type of energy function 
we use to describe the interaction among, between our particles um, and among the one available. So how we can choose among the one animal, my suggestion will be to choose the model that encompass the property of interest and how you can do, you can search in literature and the best ways to see which is the model that is most used to describe the, a problem very similar to your problem and then choose that first field. Because more people use the first field, more problem concern that first field will come out and maybe are solved and reparameterization at the core. The other things that you have to account when you choose that you want, you have to be sure that you can simulate a system, the size of your simulation is larger than the size of, this, the size of your system. And also the model should allow you, if you're interested in the specific case in approaches, that the simulation time that you, you need to achieve is larger than the time of the process that you want to es estimate. In this way, you can see that there is a, a relation between the size, how we describe the system, if we describe atomistic or constrained, how large we can describe and how long we can simulate. So, okay, so now how Chromax can help us to prepare this topology file. So, for example, if we have our um, structure, PDB structure, this is as a, a lysozyme, for example, we have choose the first field among one of the standard first field, maybe, or we want to run another version of the first field that is not standard implemented in Chromax, we can just put in the working directory, a first field directory with the, our desired first field. Then we have to run PDB to JMix. The input of the PDB to JMix is the PDB structure. And then also these tools allowed us also to decide to ignore the hydrogen, to add, to decide the protonation states or specific residue, to add the termini or not, and also allowed us, for example, to, to decide which uh, sulfur bridge are present or not. So some, there are other things that these tools can do and tune. And at the end, it can generate a topology file. And now I want to just to show you briefly how it looks like this topology file that is generated. That is, uh, the topology file that is a topo ITP format. And uh, you will notice that here in this topology, we have a, a hierarchy. And in this hierarchy is as must be followed. So first we describe the force field, then we describe the molecules in the system. And at the end, we describe the system. And this order, this is one thing that one I have to keep in mind, should be respect, cannot be changed. Indeed, here, first things we include the force field file. That is what the thing, first things that include. In this case, we were using Charm 27, that is one of the uh, force field implemented in Gromax. So here we tell to read all the parameters inside this directory. Then we start to describe the system. Here was a protein, a small protein in water solution with the correct ion, with the ionic anion concentration 0 0.50. So we describe first the molecule, then for the molecule, we define each atom that are present in the model, in the molecule, and you can see the atom type. We also, so here we have information, the charge, the mass. Then we go on and we will describe all the interaction for this specific molecule. So here the bond, the pair, the angle, the dihedral, and you can see that each interaction usually described by the number, the number corresponding to the atoms that are involved, and if the type of function that describes the interaction. Then the parameter, you might be having the parameter here or a read in the force field file. And that is a standard structure for any type of interaction. Then again, for the protein, we might also need to include other files. For example, position restraint file are included here or other restraint file. And then here is finish the description of the protein. And then we start to description of the water. In this case, we just take, we have already a topology file for the water standard one generated by default. So we just include that one. Here we have information on the position restraint for the water. And here we finish. The description of, of the water. And then we start here for the description of the last 
atoms that we have in our system that are the ions. As you can see, this order was protein, water, ion. And this should be exactly the same order that we have also in the structure file. Then finally, we have here the description of all our system. It tells us that we have all, we have a protein and how many protein we have only one. As water, we have solve, that's called solve, we have more than 7,000 water molecule. Then we have 22 sodium ion and 30 chloride. Ion. And that is all the information that are in the topology here. The topology, so describe all the interaction between all the atoms in your system. Then we move on and we have molecular dynamics parameter. That is the last input file that we need, where we say what to do. So we have different section, we can say. So we have first, uh, usually we put information on uh, what we want to do, how we want to simulate our system here. For example, we do MD, so molecular dynamic simulation, which time step we want to use, how many step we want to run. Then we have a section where we can con control the frequency on which we save the output and why it's important because nowadays we run very, very long simulations, so with a lot of step and we cannot save each step because the file will become too large and will be not handleable anymore. So we have to control and decide how is reasonable, how frequently is reasonable to save, to have a handleable file and to have also space where to put those stuff. Then we have a session where we set the which type of constraint we want to use. Then we have another section define all how we want to run the non-bonded interaction, both the Coulomb and the Van der Waals. As you can know, you can imagine some of those parameters are influenced, depends on the first field that you choose. And that is the time step. So you have to choose the same type step that the first uh, was used in the parameterization of the first field. If this was two femtoseconds, it's two femtoseconds. If it was one, you have to run with one femtosecond. The bond, are some bond restrained, constrained during the parameterization or not? If yes, you have to use the same setting. And all the setting that was used during the parameterization for the non-bonded interaction. So that means the cutoff that was used for the Coulomb and the Van der Waals, how was treat the long range interaction. So after the cutoff. Then we have our MDP file that is very standard, but if we run like it is, we end up to run in a very peculiar thermodynamic ensemble. That is not usually the thermodynamic ensemble that we want to reuse in if we want to compare with uh, biochemistry or biophysical experiment. So if we run like this, we will be in a MV ensemble. So constant number of particle, volume, and total energy. We probably want more to aim to describe an MPT ensemble. So a condition where we have a constant number of particles, constant pressure, and constant temperature. So that means that we need something, information. We have to add information on how to control the pressure and how to control the temperature. And now we have, so we have other part of the MTP file where we provide information how to control the temperature. What means control the temperature? So uh, usually we say which barostat we use, which is the reference temperature, then what we want to couple and which the frequency. What is the aim of a thermostat? The aim, thermostat, the aim of the thermostat is to reproduce at the correct average temperature with the correct fluctuation of the temperature. And the same is valid for the barostat, for the pressure. So the, the aim, the goal of the barostat is to reproduce the average pressure with the correct oscillation of the pressure. In this case, we we define here which type of barostat we, we want to have. We define which is our reference temperature. We have also to define the compressibility. So this is the value of the water for the water. We also define the frequency which we want to couple. 
in Gromax, we have, as a couple type of uh, pressure coupling, we have isotropic, semi-isotropic, anisotropic, also you can couple with surface tension. Then we might have something else. So at the beginning, I would say we have an initial structure that might contain information position and velocity, but not always we have the velocity. So sometimes we have to generate the velocity. And how we generate the velocity? We generate the velocity using the relation that there is this relation that is a relation between the temperature and the velocity of all the atoms of the system. And in this way, we can generate in a, ram, a random maximal distribution of the kinetic energy corresponding to the desired temperature. And so it means that in this way at time t, we can have the velocity already associated to the particle, such a way the system is already at the correct temperature as a starting point. But that we have to ask also this in the MTP file. So we have to ask, yes, please generate the velocity and for this temperature. I just put the reference here. So if you are interested to know more on the simulation parameter, there is a nice uh, webinar on this address that go through, walk through all the simulation parameter. Okay, so now we go. So we have all our input file, structure, topology, a simulation parameter. In Gromax, to start the simulation, you do in two steps. First, you put all those information together in the pre-processing. Chrome PP will do that. And it will, all those information will end up in a file called, the quiz, which is essentially is TPR file. Then this TPR file can be run with MD run, and then it will generate in all our conformation, different type of conformation based on the model that we, disc we, we choose. And in particular, this all this ensemble of structure will be collected in a different file. So we will have a, a trajectory file that we collect all the snapshot that we ask to save. And this might have two different format, an XTC format that is a compact format or more standard format. Here you can also have information on the velocity and the force acting on the atoms. Then we have an energy file that contains all the information on the energy. And both the trajectory energy file are binary file. Well, then we have a log file that is an ASCII format. And when the simulation is finished, the last structure is saved in a CRO format. You have to think about that while you are running the simulation, you can always analyze and check while the simulation running your file. In particular, you can look your trajectory, you can analyze your energy file. It's always possible. Usually you have to do a little workflow before getting to the data production. So to get really, to generate really confirmation to answer to your question. And that means that you have first to have, when you choose the model, probably your system is not completely relaxed with that model. So you need some energy minimization. Then maybe you want to relax the position of the solvent of the ion that somehow the ion are put in a random way. And maybe you want also that the system is going to the desired temperature, the desired pressure. So you will have an equilibration of all the system. And then after, when this is completely equilibrated, solvent, ion are relaxed, you can start data production. And from data production, you will get an ensemble of conformation, wherefore you can extract this type of protein, of properties, property, sorry. Each step is characterized by an MDP in simulation file with a specific for each step. If you are curious how those MDP files are looking, you can look to the MD introduction tutorial in the Gromax page that can be run both online and offline and is going exactly through all this step. Now we have our simulation. So our simulation is done. And the first things I always suggest everybody just look your structure, visualize it, do a visual inspection of what is going on. And if you think everything looks fine. Then here I've released some of the analysis tools that are most used uh, 
to analyze the structure, at least as a first analysis. So we have uh, tools that analyze, extract from the energy file all information, temperature, pressure, energy density, and so on. We have also a tool, triactconf, that convert the trajectory file, try to fix the periodicity problem. Maybe the, the molecule is jumping in out of the box and all this artifact. Then we have also tools that helps to create a file where with the specific selection, maybe you want to analyze only a part of your system, not the whole system. This is GMX select or GMX Make index. Then there are tools, for example, to calculate a root mean square deviation, to cluster. Maybe you want to uh, divide your structures in cluster with different, different cluster algorithms are available, or you want your interest in some specific distance. We have also tools to calculate the distance. This is just a small collection of the tools that are available. There are, all, there are a lot of more other tools available. All, all the Gromax commands are online or our command line that require an option before any argument. For help, you can always type the name of the command and then after that main age and you will uh, help will show. So now I want to just to go to other type of simulation that by, I thought might be interest for uh, this community that are, for example, simulation performed under restraint. So what are restraint? restraint that are used for imposing uh, restraint on the motion of the system. In Gromax, we have different type of restraint that are implemented. So we can have, as I mentioned already, position restraint. We have a flat bottom position restraint again. Then we have restraint more on angle. Can we apply restraint on angle on the atrium? Or we can also apply restraint on distance. We can, uh, we can have a simple harmonic, from a simple harmonic restraint to a more complex NMR restraint. And then we have also orientational restraint. So maybe if you are dealing with an NMR experiment, you might want us to have a simulation based on this restraint, for example. There is a tool that might help you to build the input with this restraint, it doesn't cover everything, but if you need to put to add your restraint inside your input file, maybe the tool GMX gen restraint gen rest might help you, might be useful. So now I want just to say how you set a simulation when you, you want to use, for example, this orientation restraint. So you start with setting a standard simulation like I explained up to now. So you have your input, uh, your, your, your three input file. Then you have to add some information on the restraint in the topology file. If those information go, for example, you want to have a sort of noise restraint. This time you will add this uh, directive distance restraint where you specify all your setting. Or you want to just to have restraint or connect on, for example, on the power coupling, you can have an orient orientation the restraint. And here you specify will atom are involved and how you set the restraint. Also, some information has to be added to the MDP file, for example, that you want to perform an MR refinement. So, and these are the options that go involve NMR refinement and for the distance and for orient orientation. Then uh, at this point, when you, you have to put all your input file together with the Chrome PP, like that was, uh, but uh, you have also to add an extra file that might be identical to the, your structural file, where is the coordinate of the, the reference restraint coordinate that we provide. And then you can run your simulation. In this uh, parameter, you can decide if you want to have an average on time or an ensemble. And there is another way to drive a simulation that is a density guide simulation. In this case, it's something different. Here we apply an addition, we have an additional force that is applied to atoms. And this force depends on the gradient between the simulated density and the reference density. And so how it works, how you do that, you set again a standard simulation 
all the input file like you want to do for a standard simulation. Then you have to you need to have a reference density in your working directory, and you have to point to this reference density from your MDP file. So you have to put the name of this reference density in your MDP file. Then you have to add to the MDP files to the parameter file all the parameter for uh, require for a density guide simulation, and then you perform your simulation. Here I just point that if you want to know more on uh, specific on this topic, there is a nice webinar on density guide simulation combined cryo EM data and molecular dynamics simulation. Now I just want to point out that there are more, a lot of other options in Gromax that can be used. And here I just listed the one that are there, that are all section of the MDP parameter file. In the future, we might also have pH simulation, and we are trying to build an interface with QMMM with CP2K. Then, finally, I want to give some reference to Gromax. So Gromax is always come with the slogan, fast, flexible, free. Fast, since it's performing good, both on CPU, and GPU environment. Flexible since you can use different type of force field and you have different functional functional form are implemented in free because it's a, an open, soft, uh, open source so software and it's done thanks to, to the, a lot of developer all over the world. It always come with a version that is uh, composed by two numbers in 2021st and release number three. And what is, so we always put new feature in the new year. So, in, and then for all the year, we keep the feature and we fix all the bug. So if you want to run with for data production, usually I suggest to take the version of the previous year, in this case, 2020, with the higher release number. So it should be more bug free. Then here is the link to the page of the Chromax documentation. So this manual, Gromax.org, this you can find the manual. We have also a very nice forum active with different category, with there is a user category, but uh, we have also an announcement category and a category where people can upload the third party that are used for, for the Gromax community. Third party tools, sorry, that are usable for the Gromax community. Then we have also a tutorial page where we have a series of tutorial that the Gromax team is performing and using in their workshop and people can run it online and offline. Online is, uh, is possible to run thanks to my binder. And also we link to other page where we know that other, uh, other group has built a tutorial, Gromax tutorial. Then tutorial is, uh, Gromax is on GitLab also and that's where people can report issue or bugs. And uh, finally, Gromax is also a web page, but that is a little under construction, I will say. We hope to come with a new release of the web page soon. And finally, there is also a, web, a webinar that is coming every year when we come with a new version. So the, the, this webinar is on Gromax 2021. 20, we will have next, next uh, February or March, we will have the one of the 2022nd. And here I just want to mention the current developer of Gromax. Most of them are located. So on the left side are the one located in Stockholm, in Sweden, and the other are located all over the world. And finally, I want just to, for you to have a feeling, this uh, here is the collection of all the developer of Gromax uh, from when Gromax started in Groningen up to now. And finally, I want to thank you for your attention and again, SP Grid Consortium to give us the opportunity to present Chroma here. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Let's see. Uh, you should be able to raise hands. So there's a reaction button you can go here and, uh, if there are questions. I had a few and I, uh, I just had also a few comments. Uh, one, I just wanted to point out that the Gromax uh, manuals. Uh, and I see a lot of software manuals. The Grovax manuals are spectacular, like in terms of like documentation, but also, I mean, they're 
they're uh, very easy to read and they, uh, you might even learn about, you know, molecular dynamics. They almost read like a textbook. They're like uh, very clear and uh, really good. So I would, I would say, you know, there's lots of great um, how to's and, uh, and how to use it and what uh, all the different functions and things do. So um, be sure to grab those uh, and, and take a look. Uh, could you say a little bit about the density guided um, simulations you talked a little bit about? I'm particularly thinking about the size. Is the size of cryo-EM structures a factor uh, that you need to take into account when you do these density guided simulations for cryo? No, as far as I know, it's not. That. As far as I know, it's not uh, an issue. And also, yeah, it's, it's adapting to the, the, to the density. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, so it's not, uh, you should have a convergence inside a reasonable time, I will say. Okay. And, and that would be on GPU, CPU, or? These are, we are running on uh, both GPU and CPU. Okay. So currently, we, Gromax is running on both. And also, almost everything is implemented on GPU, yeah. Yeah, it's one of my uh, uh, sort of examples for a good software to run on GPU because it does a great job of just like, oh, you know, that's in GPUs, so I'll use them. Yeah, so uh, if so one there is there is a nice uh, also a nice tutorial on GPU performance if people are interested. I can just uh, if I'm uh, I can if people are interested, I just copy it in the chat. I can copy it in the chat. Okay. Daniel here. So, Hello, can you hear me? Yep. All ahead. right. So I have two questions. Um, and thank you, first of all, for this talk and for developing Gromax. I published with Gromax. I love it very much. Um, the question that I would ask first was, um, are you thinking of developing like an easier way to uh, bring in uh, non-standard ligands? Because the last time I did this, I think, was two years ago. Yeah. And yeah, it yeah. was a royal pain editing the topology file. And it always seemed like it's never going to work until it finally did. So is yeah. there an effort in Gromax to standardize that? So we would we are we would like to have effort. I mean, we have we don't have really funding for that, but it's something that we are we know we are aware of the issue and we are trying to work out. One thing that was developed is stage. I don't know if you have ever used it. It's, pretty, it's working pretty good with not standard ligand. And, uh, but it's not uh, yet, there is nothing directly integrating Bromax. We are also working on uh, improving PDB to GMX because most people is where a lot of people has problem in the generation. And there is also something ongoing but it's not yet finalized. Yeah. Okay, thank you. My, I'm uh, sorry that I cannot give you a positive. I would love to tell you, yes, but uh, we are aware. This, I, I know that we are aware this is a large problem and we, we try to find support for that in a way that we can develop something because I think it's very, it's one of the things that's necessary for the community, definitely. Thank you. Uh, my second question is, um, like today, if somebody's starting out and has, you know, let's say 10,000 to drop on the machine, what would be your recommendation? What should people get in order to run Gromax most optimally? I will say that he has to have a mixed architecture, GPU plus CPU. Uh, is there any blog post or anything uh, which would like recommend the machine? Oh, for recommend the machine, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, we have a collaboration with NVIDIA, but uh, so we are trying to optimize that, but we will also move to other graphical cards. So there is also developer going on. So I, we, I hope that we can support more graphical card. And, uh, but I think I will not, yes, yeah, there is a lot of things going on and we have all performance tests to check the performance, but I cannot come with the direct because there are different opinion. I think you can look, maybe there are some suggestion in the forum, people were there to say some suggestion there. Thank you. I know that's an area that Eric has been very active in, Ed Lindahl for uh, 
uh, rely on for sure. A lot of people are asking, you know, should you accelerate a disk? You know, what should we buy? So I know that he uh, does have a hardware interest in some, some hardware. I know that we always run, you know, just for most of playing around here, just on GPUs. How many GPUs are, does it scale across more than four or eight? And a lot of software will hit four and it tends to sort of grow out. Do you know if it's worthwhile to run on more than four at a time? I will say so. I I I half I have I hear the half of your question. I understand that you were asking if you have to run all on GPU and all on CPU. I will always suggest to run on both. You can I tune on the, both. The, the part that his time. audio broke up on was that he was asking about ah, scaling across multiple GPUs. So if if you know some programs ah. will work with you know one or two or five, and sometimes there's a balance you need to top between MPI threads and GPUs. Yeah, it depends also what is the connection between the two GPU because then you can lose performance in the in the physical connection between the GPU. But there, if they are inside the same place, you can run as much as you can, but you have to have in the same location. Uh, so my my question is. I guess two part question related to the the initial velocity generation. So some of the experimental methods like x ray crystallography will give you a, a temperature factor for the different atoms in the system. Is is there any way to make use of those when you're parameterizing the initial velocities? And is there any point to doing that? Or is that just something that's going to get washed out as the simulation runs? It's something that is washed out when the simulation is running. So usually, I should, so if you don't provide velocity, you start at the temperature zero. And then suddenly come in the thermostat that is coupled to a 300. So it, may, it might be the system as a little shock. So for this reason, it's better to just assign already to all the atoms a velocity such a way that they reproduce the desired temperature. But those are also, as I, as you, you will see, they were they just distribute. It's a Maxwell distribution of those velocity. So the information that you have from the starting structure, then you lose very quickly in, in uh, while you run the simulation. So I think to to keep those. I think these information are important to have. To they provide this NMR information. They also provide a lot of. In input in how flexible those parts of the molecule will be. And that I think is something that then you can go back and to see in your fluctuation in the system if this is corresponding or not. This I think is the best way to use, to use those indication. Also, you can then try from when you run a simulation, try to build an average structure and to look how are the fluctuation of each single point if the structure is not deviated too much? So it doesn't have two conformation, it's only one main conformation. And then with this compared to what was reported in the X-ray crystallography, but I will not use as an input. I'm also usually suggest not to use crystallographic water, also ion that come from the X crystallographic structure except if ion or those water are really considered as a complex, a binding water, but if they are just there, I will suggest to remove and to just solvate, and then the water or the ion will go in that position if that one, definitely for protein, might be different for magnesium and RNA, might be one, might need to pay more attention on the role of the ion. Thank you. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, it's one o'clock, so we can. Uh, oh, we've got one more. I'll get, we can do one more. I'll do. Uh, go ahead, Andrew. Hi. Thanks very much for the presentation. Uh, I was just wondering if there was any upper limit to uh, the size of a system that you can simulate, such as uh, I don't know, like large structural proteins, for instance, or uh, like the ribosome, like the, these kind of systems, uh, yeah. would you be looking at doing a coarse-grained uh, model or 
So it depends a lot which, in the case of a ribosome, depends a lot which is the question that you want to answer. Mm. Uh, ribosome is pretty large, but depends a lot if you are interested in a specific interaction, then you might want to go always to atomistic. And, uh, or, but if you just be, want to have a, a general view, you can start with the coarse grain. And then we have uh, with some coarse grain model, you have always the possibility to go back to the atomistic description with a procedure called back mapping, and then go to see and run that specific conformation atomistically to see exactly what happens to the interaction on your system. Also, you can think about if you are not interested in the whole ribosome and only on a specific part of the ribosome that you might want to simplify the system. That is the other option. But actually we can, uh, it's possible, it's low, but it's possible to run a ribosome. So, so if I was to simplify uh, the system, I could put say position restraints around the periphery or something. That could be an option, definitely. It can also be, you can also apply, you can also use uh, to reduce, to speed up, you can also use virtual sites. That is also possible. So it allowed you to go for a larger time step, for example. Okay. From two, you go to five time step. That is also a way to do. Or uh, the other way is also, yeah, you can, if you are just interested in only specific, uh, for example, interaction of the specific RNA with just a part of the ribosome, just to try to consider only that system. That, of course, is the, the question, yeah, if you can really isolate that part of the system. I know that's very tricky with the ribosome. Mm, thanks very much. Any other questions? All right, well then, uh, Alessandra, thank you very much uh, for uh, this great intro to uh, getting started with Gromax. I know that it's a, uh, a title that a lot of people use and uh, I can tell you that 2021.3 is out and available in SP Grid. We also have the 2020.06 or 2020.6 if you wanna use the more stable like she recommended. And um, uh, yeah, it's there and uh, let me know if you have any problems or questions. Uh, be sure to join us next week where we hear about temperature sensitive trip channels from the Sobolevsky lab. So uh, I thought I saw Alexander on the list here. It looks like he maybe left already, but uh, uh, that's gonna be a great talk. Uh, be sure to join us. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.